Hello, hello, more Dimmers here and welcome to another tournament played in 2020, but this time it's not online tournament. This time it's the tournament over the board and it takes place in Stavanger in Norway. And uh, it's called Altibox Norway Chess Tournament and uh, we have uh, six great players invited for this tournament. Of course, we have Magnus Carlsen, Fabiano Caruana, number two in the world, Levon Aronian and also, uh, Anish Giri was supposed to play, uh, but he prefers to stay at home as the situation, in his opinion, is not stable enough uh, to risk his life. And uh, Jan Krzysztof Duda plays as replacement from Poland. Also, we have Alireza Firuzia invited and Arian Tari uh, from Norway uh, is the sixth player. So he has a chance uh, to, you know, train against the, the top players uh, in the world. Uh, and I would like to show you the game from round one. Very exciting, very beautiful game played by Jan Krzysztof Duda and Alireza Firuzia. So without further ado, let's see what happened uh, on the board. Jan Krzysztof Duda open with e4. We have c6. Karo can defense. Uh, and at the end of the video, I will give you the link. I should uh, also put the link in the description so you can check to the interviews uh, with Jan Krzysztof Duda and Alireza Firuzia. And Jan Krzysztof Duda said that his coach said, okay, Alireza can play Karo Khan. And he just said, eh, it's not possible. But as you see, Alireza played Karo Khan indeed. So Jan Krzysztof Duda was not really prepared uh, against what Alireza gonna play. We have d4, d5 knight c3 and now d takes on e4 so a main line knight e4 bishop f5 attacking the knight knight retreat to g3 with the tempo on the bishop bishop h6 and h4 with the threat h5 winning the bishop this is why we have h6 making a space for the bishop knight f3 and now this knight can jump to e4 with the tempo on the bishop black would love to you know preserve this bishop uh, this is why we have knight d7 now controlling e5 uh, and only now h5 bishop h7 and this bishop uh, made couple of moves already uh, this is why bishop d3 is a great idea to actually exchange that bishop uh, and black doesn't have much choice we have bishop d3 queen d3 and now e6 uh, taking under control the, the d5 square so any moves you know like uh, c4 d5 uh, are not really possible also the bishop can be developed um, now very very easy uh, and now bishop f4 is one of the ideas here however black also can uh, bring the queen to a5 uh, and as white would like to for example castle on the the queen side um, a2 would be quite vulnerable so uh, this is why Jan Krzysztof Duda plays bishop d2 another variation now of course um, a5 is uh, taken under control we have knight g2 f6 developing and now castle on the queen side we have bishop e7 king b1 improving the position of the king and now castle we have knight e4 by Jan Krzysztof Duda and now it's possible actually to exchange the knights uh, this way knight e4 queen e4 knight f6 queen e2 and this is of course very much playable by both of the players however Alireza Firuzia prefers c5 now undermining this d4 pawn and now how to continue Jan Krzysztof Duda as I said was not prepared for Karo Khan so he spent over 30 minutes uh, to figure out the move and now just a reminder first 40 moves we have two hours for the for the first 40 moves and 30 seconds incrementation uh, so as you see 30 minute is already 25% of the time. Uh, so what are the options for Jan Krzysztof Duda? The most popular is g4, sacrificing this pawn. Of course, g5 would be very, very annoying. This is why knight g4, very sharp uh, continuation. Queen e2, now defending f2. And after queen b6, the idea is knight e5 and now black has to be extremely uh, careful how to pick up this this knight this knight cannot pick up i i will not show you now uh, you know another variation so deeply uh, i will just show you the ideas that the main moves is knight d takes on e5 d takes on e5 uh, and the game can continue here with the f5 and as you see this is gonna be very very sharp and 
white can bring the rook to this uh, open file the bishop can take on h6 and so on so there are a lot of very sharp ideas here but also in some variations this bishop can put a lot of pressure on this diagonal together with the queen uh, and this is really double edge variation uh, another option for young krzysztof duda would be d takes on c5 immediately and it doesn't look so great however this is still playable knight c5 and after knight f6 bishop f6 just exchange the queens okay so uh don't need to move the queen just exchange the queens and after rook f to d8 a bishop e3 and it's still you know very much playable and equal position however young krzysztof duda went for bishop e3 now put the pressure on c5 and now we have knight e4 we have queen e4 knight f6 with tempo and now uh, because of that we have queen b7 so instead of building the pressure and attack on the uh, on the king side uh, of the dark position now white grab the pawn so won the pawn however the b file is open and it looks like very very risky now first threat after knight d5 is of course knight c3 and the point is this pawn cannot take the knight because the rook would actually pin the queen and win the queen soon after so this is why we have queen a6 avoiding that so now now knight c3 of course is not the threat uh, and now rook b8 by alireza firuzia and now uh white actually this is the move recommended by the engine d takes on c5 just take it it doesn't look like you know so great uh, because of this move knight c3 so it looks like very very risky however the engine likes it uh, and why is that because after an, uh, king c1 knight d1 rook d1 the queen is under attack queen c7 c6 and this pawn uh, can be really really annoying uh you know now for example this pawn is also under attack and um, and so on the, the the rook can come to d7 so all of these threats you know all together uh it's very very dangerous so it actually uh is still very much playable however young krzysztof duda went for bishop d2 taking under control c3 we have c takes on d4 knight takes on d4 and now bishop f6 and look what just happened alireza firuzia has a lot of pressure on b2 and it looks very very risky so knight b3 blocking um this semi-open b file we have queen c7 rook h to e1 developing the the last piece which of course is one of the principles of the opening we have rook f to c8 and now there is a lot of pressure on c2 actually it's a threat to take um the pawn on c2 how to continue c3 uh, actually is uh, it could be played however it's not really recommended because uh, rook b6 uh, and then black gonna you know double the, the rooks over here and this pawn gonna margin it's gonna be very very nasty so uh, instead this rook goes back to c1 but the rook was already on the open file and now um, that is uh, very very sad that it has to you know go back uh, and here alireza went for knight b6 i think it's the is the preparation because this position was reached actually 18 years ago by Alexander Bielawski and Zoltan Gimeshi. And, uh, you know, Alexander Bielawski, super grandmasters, maybe 18 years ago, he had already, you know, he wasn't the, the youngest uh, person. However, he was still very, very dangerous. So what happened in that game? Uh, I would like to just show you that Jan Krzysztof Duda played Rook E4, very natural move. And Alexander Bielawski also played the same move. The the idea is to bring the bishop to f4 so as you see this is already very very dangerous idea uh, and in that game we had queen c6 i will just show you because it was also a very beautiful game we had a rook b4 so now uh countering this attack on the on the b file and then after queen g2 exchanging the the, the pawns queen a7 queen f2 a4 so a5 definitely is coming and then very strong move uh, by zoltan bishop b2 
extremely strong and extremely beautiful move now king b2 of course cannot be played because the queen gonna be lost so uh, very very interesting continuation uh, in the game we had rook f4 by alexander and after queen e2 rook e1 caressing them the queen queen g2 then queen f7 very very sharp game king h8 and then again rook e6 and white has a very interesting very sharp position and knight d5 was played and here alexander bielawski actually blundered the game because instead of playing rook f2 which was uh, actually winning for him uh, he played rook g6 harassing the queen the point is he didn't calculate queen d2 and uh, this is so beautiful a move that Alexander Bielawski actually in better position had to resign and he resigned because he cannot take the queen because that would be a checkmate watch at that this is a checkmate so this is how sharp this position can become but Alireza Firuzia didn't scare this skewer this skewer looks like very very nasty but he didn't care he played knight c4 anyway as you see the position is completely double edged um, and now knight c4 by Alireza Firuzia so he doesn't care about this skewer he doesn't care knight c4 saying if you want uh, go for that so we have bishop f4 uh, skewer and threatening to win the exchange however Ali Reza simply play queen b6 saying uh, you cannot take my my rook because your queen is hanging so we have queen b6 rook b6 and now bishop e3 uh, now skewering the the rook and threatening to take on a7 which Ali Reza said okay go for that uh, you can take my pawn but the problem is if you take it actually uh, then I'm gonna win your rook so you cannot even do that this is why we have f3 now defending the pawn and maybe it would be possible actually uh, to sacrifice the exchange for this pawn and getting you know this connected uh, three connected past pawns uh, and now can black actually take on b2 is it even possible actually not knight b2 of course cannot be uh, played because the rook is hanging so that's the first thing uh, and also bishop b2 cannot be taken because the only defender uh, of the bishop can be uh, eliminated and two pieces for the rook white of course uh, would have much easier game this is why we have a5 so a4 is coming also the rook is under protection now uh, and here is the one of the critical moments of the game Jan Krzysztof Duda has to make a decision how to continue the game uh, if he play because you know a4 is coming a4 is coming he can uh, sacrifice the pawn and uh, you know delay this a bit however if he tries c3 it looks like very very solid but black simply can play rook b5 and what do you play now because a4 is coming your knight is gonna be moved and then you have the double attack on b2 and you cannot defend with rook c2 because after a4 and let's say knight d4 with the attack on the rook the bishop can exchange but then we're gonna have knight at a3 winning the exchange and black still have this pawn so this is why Jan Krzysztof Duda uh, give up the exchange but uh, for the price this pawn gonna collapse as well so we have rook c4 rook c to c4 and now bishop d2 another skewer since like Jan Krzysztof Duda loves the skewers in this game uh, so much so we have rook b5 now uh, not maybe defending but you know going after h5 pawn and now we have bishop a5 rook h5 so that was exchange of the pawns um, and now rook g1 we have rook goes back to b5 uh, just to make sure that this knight gonna stay on b3 because what white would like to do is you know move these pawns connected three connected past pawns however it's not possible because the knight is an obstacle and if the knight is moved then of course we still have this um, dangerous threat so uh, this is why bishop d2 first because if we want to move the knight the knight is the only defender of this bishop so that's the first move which have to be done but now alireza start to push his pawns h5 we have c3 
country. So a couple of moves Jan Krzysztof Duda needs actually to uh, bring these pawns to the game and create any threats. Uh, and of course Alireza Firuzia want to be dangerous on the another side. We have g5, king c2 and now g4. Uh, we have knight c1 and here actually the engine suggests that g takes on f3, g takes on f3, king h7 would be the best because black already have the past pawn uh, probably very dangerous for now it can be of course stopped uh, but you know playing making some plans around this uh, past bone would make a lot of sense uh, at least the stockfish thinks this way uh, but Alireza has another idea he plays g3 so in the future he want to uh, you know play h4 h3 and then once this pawn is eliminated uh, then black gonna have the pass pawn on its own as well uh, we have b3 now kicking the rook rook c8 and now a4 kicking another rook so we have rook f5 uh, and now knight e2 going after the, the g3 pawn, so h4 defending, and now c4. And now uh, which side would you like to play now? Uh, maybe this pawn is gonna be faster, three connected past pawns, that's uh, something. Or maybe something is about this pawns, how do you think? It's a very, very difficult decision to, to be made here. Uh, we have e5, bishop e3, and now bishop g5, saying let's exchange these bishops. And Jan Krzysztof Duda agreed, so we have bishop g5, rook g5, and now rook h1 going after that pawn, saying rook h5, I'm gonna maybe take on g3. Uh, but was it possible? Actually, this was pretty good move, which Jan Krzysztof Duda didn't play he decided that it's maybe not as strong as it looked like. However, it was pretty good one. Knight g3, rook g5, and knight e4. And yes, this pawn gonna be lost. However, after king c3, this pawn uh, also cannot be defended. So uh, actually, black would have these two pawns uh, against the knight and the pawn and still have to deal with these three connected past pawns. So this was possible. Uh, it was the best move in the position. However, king c3 is also a very good move uh, and it's is equal. These moves are equal according to the, to the stockfish. However, uh, now the players have to be very, very precise. So we have f5 b4, uh, f4, and here is the critical moment of the game. And believe me or not, both of the players out of uh, their, their, their time control, they have only one minute on the clock and the incrementation, of course. So it's definitely extremely difficult to calculate everything. And Alireza Firuzia said um, in the interview that Jan Krzysztof Duda is one of the best blitz players in the world. And it's difficult to say who's gonna be the favorite of this game. So Alireza felt a lot of respect to Jan Krzysztof Duda and he asked for a draw. And Jan Krzysztof Duda told for a while, however, in the interview, and um, again, he said, I don't know how it's gonna uh, end, but it's definitely not a draw. It's impossible that thi this can end, um, you know, in the draw. So he refused and he started to play. Now, how to continue the game? There are two ways to draw that game or or win that game as white. Uh, and in the interview, uh, Jan Krzysztof Duda said probably knight g1, and he was right. Knight g1 was very important, blocking this h3 advancement. He underestimated how dangerous h3 can be. So black would have to find something else. Knight g1 was the way to go, one of the two ways to go. Um, and for example, after e4, f takes on e4, f3 is not possible as you see this knight makes a really great defense if you try f3 then simply knight f3 h3 g takes on h3 g2 and this pawn gonna be lost and of course uh, rook g1 rook h3 uh, this knight can actually don't need to move yet um, rook g2 and now there is a huge decision where to move the king because if you move the king to the to the h file then white gonna force the exchange of the rooks and this for four pawns gonna win the game. That's the problem. So uh, king would have to be moved to the, to the f file, but that means that rook f2 uh, can actually defend the, the knight on time uh, because that was also a danger that there is the, the pin and this rook can actually join and win 
the knight but it's not possible now uh, because after king e7 making a space for the rook uh, king d4 and there is no problem anymore and of course white is winning here uh, quite easy should should win without any problems so black couldn't play something like f3 but rather rook e5 and after king d4 rook c to e8 going after that pawn then knight f3 uh, rook e4, king d5, rook e2 going after these pawns. However, white can also win a couple of pawns. So it's still, you know, quite double edge, and it's very difficult uh, to say who has advantage. Uh, what Stockfish suggests is just equal. This is what Jan Krzysztof Duda didn't believe. However, it could happen because this knight gonna be sacrificed for this pawn in some moment of the game, and then the rook gonna be, you know, sacrificed for two, po two pawns, and that should be a draw, uh, at least according um, to the engine. But Jan Krzysztof Duda didn't go for knight g1. He moved one of these pawns. Which one? How do you think? Because one move, one of these pawns is losing uh, and another one is drawing or winning for white. If black is not precise enough, then, you know, white could win that. Uh, and the correct move would be b5. Now, uh, Jan Krzysztof Duda went for a5, which is losing. And it's a very subtle difference. And as you see, uh, both of the players have, uh, you know, uh, uh, a little time on their clocks. And now I will just try to explain to you a couple of lines. It's impossible even to, to find all the lines. Uh, however, I will show you b5. So, uh, Alireza Firuzia won by h3 um, after, after this a5 move, however, the point is h3 doesn't work this time. Uh, why? Because rook h3, rook h3, and it looks like very risky business because rook h3, g takes on h3, and now how to continue? One of the idea would be bring the rook to the g file and push this pawn. Once this pawn is pushed and exchange for the for the knight, maybe these pawns actually could win the game. So let's see how could happen. So king f7, now a5, so white also gonna push, rook g8, that makes sense, a6, g2 uh, and now a7 and now it looks like it's very very dangerous you cannot push this pawn yet because if the knight takes and you take the knight then white gonna promote that's the problem so e4 would have to be played uh, and then after knight g1 uh, if this pawn actually is pushed to e3, this knight actually can, can handle uh, all the position here. Also, um, the, the king can come and uh, white would win that game. Uh, so e takes on f3, but then knight f3 and how you continue? Rook g3 and it looks like, okay, black gonna win the game because the knight is pinned. So that is the problem. And now if this pawn is promoted now this would be too early this would be too early because this knight gonna this uh, rook gonna take the knight for free and uh, if the queen takes then we're gonna have the promotion so that would be probably a draw however after king before the only winning move for white white would actually win that game because after rook f3 and promotion now the rook is under attack uh, and the problem is, if actually uh, black promote now, then the rook gonna be lost and three pawns against one pawn, uh, that would be very, very long game, but uh, white actually should win that. Rook g3 would be the most interesting, saving the rook and of course that would be serious threat, but then queen a7 and after king g6, queen actually can come to g1. So let's say f3. There is not much black actually can do here now. So b6 and this pawn gonna win the game. So let's say f2, uh, queen f2, now uh, promoting to the queen, queen g1, rook g1, and now very important, don't move this pawn yet because you're gonna lose that pawn, but rather king c5. And now this king gonna prom uh, help this this pawn to to promote and nothing can be done so these pawns have to you know stay connected so this was you know uh, one of the winning uh, ways uh, another idea how to continue maybe rook e8 now preparing to push 
this is also the idea but this pawn gonna be very fast so look at this b6 e4 now knight g1 like before e takes on f3 knight f3 and now if you think okay this is great move it's not because after king before you don't have time to take the the knight because this pawn uh, gonna be unstoppable so not this way but rather g2 but it's still only a draw let's say a5 and now uh, you cannot promote yet and also you cannot make any tricks this this is pretty nice trick rook e1 and saying okay if you take my rook i'm gonna win because i'm gonna promote and also i support this promotion uh but it would not work because b7 wins the game so rook b1 just to stop it but it's not enough because a6 a7 a8 and this pawn gonna win the game so that would be faster however Rook e3 would make a lot of sense and now after king b4 actually the knight can be taken and it's again very very complicated end game however this time uh, let's say b7 uh, black have to find another extremely you know a complicated move it looks like white is winning but if black plays something like rook g3 or king h7 not king f7 king f7 is losing king h7 very important to get away from the check uh, and then after promoting then play rook g3 okay you see the idea and now the queen can come um to a7 again with the idea on on g1 but this time doesn't work it's only a draw look at this king g6 queen g1 uh, and now f3 we know that already a6 f2 queen f2 promotion and this is only a draw before this king could support the pawns but now it's not possible why because after uh, let's say king b5 to support the pawn rook a1 okay so king b6 supporting and now rook b1 and this king actually has to go to c6 but then rook a1 so you see already the idea the king has to go back so we have rook b1 and so on so that's a draw and if white thinks okay i play uh, king a7 i will try to support the problem is that would be losing it's not possible so if white doesn't want the draw this is losing and this is very already very educational uh sometimes not to push for for the win so what would happen is king f6 uh and then if this pawn is moved then of course the 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 king gonna pick this up and if this pawn is moved to distract the king king don't need to even care king e6 h5 king d6 uh now h6 king c7 you see already a lot of troubles h7 and now rook b8 right on time uh, to pick up this pawn so uh, there is no risk c5 is the only move and now rook h8 c6 rook h7 making a space for the king otherwise that would be um of course the stalemate king a8 and now king b6 wins the game that gonna be a checkmate so c7 and of course uh black is winning so uh, as you see uh both of the sides have to be extremely precise knight g1 is the one idea uh, and b5 is another idea both at least drawing for white however we have a5 and why this move is not that great the problem is h3 this is what alireza firuzia played and now rook h3 would not work shocking shocking rook h3 would not work and why because after rook h3 g takes on h3 black have the move which didn't exist before rook a8 i mean before if rook a8 is played then the problem is the king could come uh, to b4 to support all the pawns but now the king cannot go there the king can go this way three moves even four moves to get there or play something like c5 and then the same this would be the four moves so that's quite a lot of time and black has the time uh, to actually attack on the on the king side so uh what white could play first could try to eliminate these pawns 
that would be one plan and another plan would be let's say c5 and and bring the king this way so let's try uh, both of them so king d3 king f7 and as you already see uh, the king is on the time to defend moreover if white tries to play h4 and wins the game uh the, the rook would be distracted and maybe this pawns uh, would attack there is the one problem rook d8 wins the game look at this this is a checkmate if this pawn go uh, and uh, promote to the queen the knight cannot defend both of the squares so that would be a checkmate or the queen would actually uh you know promote and win the game so uh and if white tries to uh you know get out of this na mating net and uh, knight f4 then of course this pawn are gonna win the game so uh, this way is not possible c5 maybe slightly better however still king f7 king c4 king e6 you cannot push this pawn because um the king would come to d6 so probably king b5 but then king f5 uh, and again you can play c6 it looks like very dangerous one two three four moves and and white should win but it's it's just you know visual impression that it can happen but in the truth black are much much faster look at this e4 one two three four moves and black gonna win so something like knight g1 could be played just you know if e3 then of course this knight gonna stop everything uh, so e takes on f3 knight f3 and now the king can actually attack this knight knight g5 king e3 and uh, and this pawn gonna promote and win the game so if you make the space uh, you can actually stop this one but you cannot stop both of the pawns this pawn gonna win the game so you can try to sacrifice but as you see uh you are still you know you had this four moves but it's it was too slow it was too slow uh, and now is of course too too late king b6 g2 uh, and after king b7 rook just simply go to g8 uh, c7 promotion and what white can do also promote but of course black is winning black gonna pick up all the spawns and uh, win the game so it was not possible it was not possible a <laughs> very very brutal truth g takes on h3 was played by young krzysztof duda and now e4 e4 and now again decisions by Jan Krzysztof Duda but unluckily for him all of them actually are losing but again black has to be very precise so what are the options pick up this pawn pick up this pawn or maybe bring the rook to actually defend the engine recommends rook f1 and um, as the most complicated and the best for uh, for white however after g2 uh rook f2 otherwise uh, this pawn of course gonna attack the the knight and and promote and and win the game uh, e takes on f3 and now the knight can jump to g1 and pick up this pawn that is the one option or um rook can take on f3 doesn't really matter i'm not gonna show you all the options there's a lot of lines uh, but both of them are actually winning for for black so here what would happen is rook e8 let's say uh knight g1 rook e1 and as you see this knight is trapped so rook f4 rook g1 uh white can actually move the rook behind the the, the pawn but it's not enough king f7 a6 and now of course rook c1 so promotion is coming and it cannot be stopped i mean uh whatever you play you can play you know even even king d4 it doesn't really matter uh you can also try to attack here and uh, you know exchange and it looks like okay again it looks like white is winning uh black cannot actually stop this pawn uh this way but rook h8 actually stops um this pawn and it's gonna also be uh taken and white cannot do anything about that if you think rook b5 saves the day it doesn't it doesn't i hope you see that look at this rook g3 boom rook g3 i hope you see that already b6 and now rook h to h3 and uh, if white actually uh, make promotion doesn't really matter because we're gonna have a checkmate so all can happen is of course uh the checkmate this way doesn't really matter uh this would be a a, a checkmate so uh, as you see rook f1 the most promising still doesn't work but it's pretty much complicated knight f4 
disconnecting the, the pawns and also attacking the rook so rook would have to be moved let's say rook f5 this this knight now um has to be moved otherwise it's gonna be lost so of course something like knight d5 but now again these pawns are connected and um, gonna win the game let's say rook g1 g2 uh, knight d3 trying to actually exchange the knight for uh, two pawns however it would not work why king f7 first and now this exchange would not come with the uh, with the check uh, so in anyway it would not work because black doesn't need to take the knight black can play something like rook g8 much stronger move winning this knight and still saving this pawn uh, so for example a6 the knight cannot be moved because rook is hanging and and so on so let's say a6 f takes on g2 now a7 still looks like very very dangerous uh, but now instead of playing rook f1 which would be close to the draw black has to be very very precise again rook f3 can you believe that rook f3 with the idea of taking this pawn off that is the the point and if king b2 is played again you know protecting a3 only now rook f1 and now everything is fine uh, if this pawn is taken then actually rook come with the check this is shocking how complicated end game it looks like you know very very uh, easy but it's extremely complicated so uh, white would have to actually promote to the queen uh, but then black has another winning move rook f2 with check and protecting g2 so that's winning and after king c3 only then pick up the the queen and this pawn gonna win the game as black still have two rooks against one rook very complicated jan krzysztof duda didn't go for this move i uh, didn't go for this move uh, he simply take on e4 however it doesn't work as well and i would like to show you the picture from what just happened so here we go leonard otis actually um, took that picture he's the official photographer uh, also i would like to uh, put the the link uh, to more pictures from this tournament so you can enjoy them as well and as you see Jan Krzysztof Duda is not believing that he could actually lose that game I mean he knew that it's not gonna be a draw but definitely he thought that the game gonna end um, in his favor uh, however now we have g2 by Alireza Firuzia rook g1 and now rook h3 rook h3 is the only winning move again so this time Alireza found the strongest move rook h3 with check we have king d4 and only now f3 and now the trap by Jan Krzysztof Duda he played c5 advancing the pawn saying you can take the knight and alireza didn't take it didn't take him if he takes the the knight actually this is a trap rook g2 king f7 and this pawn gonna collapse as well and this is only a draw at the end black would have to sacrifice one of the rook for two or three pawns and that would be uh, just a draw so uh, a very nice trap at the end however alireza uh, plays king f7 and now if he takes um the the knight then of course uh, uh, the the rook g2 is not gonna come with the check so that's the difference this is why we have knight f4 now attacking the rook and also attacking the pawn on g2 however after f2 jan krzysztof duda resigned and he resigned because uh, black gonna promote to the queen this way or this way and all of that cannot be stopped so for example uh, knight h3 and of course now don't take the rook that would be a draw uh, but rather uh, promote to the queen this way and this of course is winning for black what a game this game was insane double edge and Jan Krzysztof Duda's real fighter refused he knew that it's not gonna be a draw and he refused because if you don't make a point against Alireza Firuzia or Arian Tari uh, how you want to win the, the points against Magnus Carlsen Fabiano Caruana that's gonna be extremely extremely difficult Levon Aronian Levon is also in form after round two from what I've seen he's uh, he's on the lead so definitely uh, you have to you know get some points with uh, Alireza and Arian 
one. And uh, this time it didn't work. So congratulations to, to Ali Reza. And in the interview, watch the interview. I'm gonna show you the, the link in the description. Also, you check over there. Uh, Ali Reza was very ma mature and um, he talked like, you know, uh, with huge respect um, uh, about uh, Jan Krzysztof Duda. And he just thought, okay, I was very, very lucky today. I'm very, very happy about, um, you know, that win. So if you like this game, press like if for some reason you don't like it press and like and if you want to see more games from altibox norway chess 2020 press subscribe smash the bell button thanks for watching and see you in the next one